The Carbon Map is a new website created as a submission for the World Bank's Apps for Climate Competition. The site helps people engage with and understand complex climate change data through the use of animated, interactive cartogram maps, the first of their kind as far as we're aware. The site has a built-in introduction, which in itself is quite innovative as it uses a soundtrack to trigger animations, but this video provides a bit more information about the site and what we're trying to achieve with it. So let's reset the map and take a quick look around. If we click up here on a data topic, the site will animate the world map to resize countries according to the relevant data set. So we can see at a glance where the world's people are, for example, or where the GDP is. Because the maps are created as scalable vector graphics, we can make them interactive. So we can click on Brazil, say, to see its GDP or its population. This first version of the site presents around 20 data sets compiled from the World Bank and various other sources. We pulled these data together to try and give users a more nuanced picture of what drives global carbon emissions and who might feel the effects. Rather than focusing on national emissions alone, a rather one-dimensional view of the issue, the carbon map shows the whole supply chain of CO2, from where it gets extracted in the form of oil, coal and gas, through to where the resulting goods and services are consumed. So we can see, for example, how CO2 from China and America, mainly in the form of coal, compared to CO2 from the Middle East, mainly in the form of oil. Or we can see how a country's carbon footprint grows or shrinks if we take account of imports and exports. See how China's emissions shrink as we shift from emissions to consumption, reflecting the fact that it produces a lot of goods for other countries. The map also shows which countries released the bulk of the CO2 over the last century or so, which is crucial to understanding climate geopolitics because most of that CO2 is still in the air causing warming. The UK, which kick-started the Industrial Revolution, looks particularly bloated in this view. Next we show, mapped for the first time as far as we know, potential CO2 emissions currently locked up in fossil fuel reserves. Over here on the right we've added maps which show various kinds of climate change vulnerability. Here are the world's people already exposed to droughts, floods and extreme temperatures, for example. They're overwhelmingly in Asia, it turns out. Here are the world's people living less than 5 metres above sea level. Asia dominates again. And here we can see extreme poverty, people living on less than $1.25 a day which of course will make adapting to climate change more difficult. Africa suddenly looms large. But that's only one layer of data. We can also add shading to overlay an additional layer. This feature effectively allows you to use two separate global data sets at once and see how they relate. For example, if we shade by population growth, we can see at a glance how the fastest growing populations, those in red, tend to have extremely small carbon emissions and also tend to be very poor. Or we can click the emissions map and then shade by emissions per person. Now we can see that while China may be the world's biggest emitter, its footprint per person is middle ranking. Unlike, say, Australia, which is a small part of the global picture, but has a high level of emissions per person. Or let's shade by change in emissions since 1990. We can see that the big Asian countries where emissions are quickly rising now represent a huge proportion of current emissions, but a much smaller proportion of historical emissions, and that those same countries are the ones most exposed to climate impacts. So that's the Carbon Map, created by Duncan Clark and Robin Houston. Check it out with any up-to-date modern web browser at carbonmap.org.